Good morning everybody and welcome in to another custom set showcase where today we are combining every dungeon set I've made over the last four waves of LEGO Legend of Zelda custom sets to bring my vision of a dungeon building system to life. To do that we're not only going to be placing all these rooms together in a couple of different orders into a massive massive layout but adding new details and making all of the 10 sets consistent with each other, a project that started back when I remastered the Ward's Temple for 1000 subscribers and um, we had some problems. Um, um, but yeah, we're going to be adding a load of new details, uh, but first, let's get it out of the way. What am I even talking about? What is this dungeon building system? So as part of making custom sets for The Legend of Zelda, especially in a wave-based format, I wanted to make sure I had a couple of sub-themes. One of these is the combinable Hy Hyrule Castles, uh, another one was the Divine Beast Microfighters, and then the biggest one by far, and the one that's been with us since Wave 1, has been the Dungeon Builder system. Set to run through Waves 1 through to 7, there's going to be, well, over 10 sets that are going to add to this system, and it's designed a bit similar to past like Hogwarts Castle layouts or the LEGO Mario system, System, where you have these modular rooms based off the iconic dungeons from the games and inside these rooms they're themed obviously to be fitting the dungeons and have um, various details and play features that might be specific to one game's incarnation or just fit the overall theme. For example, crossing the lava puzzles in a fire dungeon or a specific boss encounter, say Bongo Bongo, being in the Shadow Temple set. Each of these rooms can be rearranged using Technic pins and stacked on top of each other using specific sets, meaning that when playing, a child could rearrange a dungeon to make a brand new experience, mix sets together to make an even more complicated dungeon, or challenge their friends uh, by combining different rooms in different layouts. Obviously these puzzles, just like how the Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom game system encourages, can be cheese using your imagination, but with the inclusion of chests and locked doors, it is possible to move keys and key items to solve puzzles around the dungeon to expand the experience further. Currently there are 10 sets consisting of Skyward Sword's Fire Sanctuary, Twilight Princess's Water Temple, the Ocarina of Time Great Deku Tree Dungeon, the Shadow Temple from the same game, uh, a Shrine Builder Kit allowing you to recreate Breath of the Wild Shrines, the Tower of the Gods from Wind Waker which is almost included but doesn't actually connect but it's definitely still a dungeon, Arbiter's Grounds from Twilight Princess, uh, a small section of Lanayru Mining Facility from Skyward Sword, this was included in a battle pack but is still a dungeon room, Volvagia's Boss Chamber from the Fire Temple of Ocarina, uh, the Spirit Temple also from Ocarina and Koloktos's Encounter from the Ancient Cistern in Skyward Sword. More will be joining this lineup, but this is every dungeon set from waves 1 through 4. So what I really like about this system is its versatility. Not only do all these rooms sort of sound out as colourful and really vibrant and densely packed uh, representations of their element and therefore dungeon from the game, allowing them all to be displayed individually if you're a fan of a specific game or dungeon, as well as they all come with characters and in some cases bosses that are also super iconic to the franchise. Uh, beyond this, just it kind of fits the spirit of LEGO, just being able to like rearrange and combine. And also, how else do you translate dungeons into, well, LEGO form? You make them a challenge that you can work with and explore, and the combinable nature of the Nintendo games, specifically obviously Animal Crossing and the Mario system, have already been shown that they are a valuable asset to the LEGO group. So I thought it was the most realistic way of turning such an iconic part of the franchise into um, well, brick form. And also, it kind of matches the fan desire for a Zelda dungeon maker. Um, which is basically what this is, as well as being inspired by the Chamber Dungeons from the Link's Awakening uh, remake on Switch. But uh, to prove my point, here's a quick example based off the Wave 1 sets. Those of you that watched the Watch Temple video uh, will actually remember this because this is the combinations I showed up there. But this just shows off what I mean. You've got these modular rooms which have either been stacked on top of each other or next to each other in a big row or right angles uh, that all look a bit higgledy biggledy and very messy, but they've all got plenty of play features and the ones that don't have explicit, like, loud action features, have spaces to put characters and so on. But um, even with these three sit sets and having the water temple which allows you to have a second floor, it kind of felt quite small and limiting potentially, so I'm really excited to see what happens when we bring all ten of the sets I talked about here today. But before I can show you those we need to make some upgrades and make things consistent, as after the water temple I had to go back and fix uh, the Technic pin connectors to all be at the same size, uh, the rooms to be at the same height so that you can stack them on top of each other, as well as just adding a bit of detail because to me the fire sanctuary you can see here in this old render looks a little barren, they're more so empty rooms with cool play features but they don't fully feel 
themed, and I, I hate the stickers on the wall there. So I'm going to do this upgrade for Fire Sanctuary. I'm going to make some tweaks to Goma's Layer as well as the Shadow Temple, and then the others we're going to bring in line because there's some weird Technic pin errors and stuff. But apart from that, I don't reckon I'll be touching those too much. Um, so let's get into the upgrades made to the Fire Sanctuary. So starting here with this overview, I think, well, at least from my perspective, wow, that makes a real, real big difference. Previously, we just had like the entranceway, a, a shell, which had the, the lava crossing feature in, but had nothing interesting on the walls, uh, a blank uh, mini boss room, and then just a really, really boring room for room four. Room five really hasn't changed that much, but let's start with the first one. Uh, the front here hasn't changed. There's just been a couple of tiles added to the floor just for some texture, and I've reinforced all of the technic pin connectors on the base. But the inside of this one did change because on the back here, I've added two statues in the Fire Sanctuary style. They're sort of, I don't know, monkeys, lions, something along that line, but you can see they've got nostrils and legs and they're sat down guarding the entrance. And this is really cool, given considering this is the only entrance model uh, module uh, basically in all of the custom sets. I mean, technically there is one in uh, Shadow Temple, but it can be used as a normal room, so it doesn't really count. This is like a full-on temple entrance, so I'm really glad that we've got an extra bit of imposingness uh, on this entranceway. And I suppose these could be lock knocked loose as well. No actual action feature, but you could always knock them over. Moving over to the splash of color that's been introduced into this second room, we now have the lava waterfall flowing out of a statue's mouth. This is again another touch that is inspired by the games where they have these, I'm going to call them again like lion chimera kind of heads coming out the walls. This one's a little goofier using uh, a load of uh, like claw elements but also just round plates with holes in the middle for eyes. Um, but I really like how it looks and it does just add a little more detail. This room's also been extended in height. I added this dark red trim to the top. I also redid the stickers for this set. These are now drawn by me instead of just color sort versions of the Disney Castle ones. I kept the print around the bottom uh, the same. And this was a print because it's used about six times in this room and the six times in another room now as well. Uh, the bomb of a wall feature is still here, so if you push down on the lever from the back, uh, the wall explodes open. And of course, how do you get across the lava gap in the first place? Well, now we actually have some environmental storytelling with this uh, warm and arid tree branch, because trees actually feature quite heavily in the fire sanctuary. Coming out of the wall, uh, we caught a couple of the new uh, orangey color for 2024 uh, flowers, but most importantly, I've recolored the peach once again into lime to represent the uh, splash fruits that fall down. So knock one of those down from above using a bow or whatever, it splashes down into the lava and then slide this lever across and voila, you have got a bridge made out of a magma, recreating a play feature in the game, but this time instead of just sliding it, you've actually got the environmental storytelling to, well, show it off properly, which I really like. I also love the uh, splash of color and the fact that it makes it feel more unique rather than just tan rooms, it's now more fire sanctuary. This motif continues into the third room, uh, which is the Magma main mini boss room. A lot of what I did with this room is I've actually uh, redid the structural supports around the back so that it's even more up to code. I did have to adjust the height of this one slightly as well, but we've still got the Magma main which can explode and then you can open the door afterwards. I've now also added a treasure chest underneath, so this could be where you get the Mogma mitts from potentially instead of from the Mogma in the next room. Uh, you've still got the sort of grating in the back as well as the grey walls, but I chose to add the pillars which do feature in this mini boss room using a combination of tan, uh, gold in a profile brick, and then they get wider at the top using some cheese slopes and some things. I wanted to use the new cheese slope that's solid, but it doesn't come in enough colors yet, and I couldn't be bothered to recolor it here. Uh, and then I've also got a leaf here still with a um, another splash fruit, specifically because how do you feed Magma main in the game? Well, yes, you explode this one with a lever, but you do use splash fruit, so you could always chuck one of those at him as well. Also, a little bit of extra color, a little bit of breaking up the symmetry. You can see here more rum. Brickwork stickers have now been added as well, just to break up the walls. I'm really, really happy with this room. Massive upgrade. Uh, I really, really like how it turned out. Coming over to the fourth room though, this one's also mostly just had color spruce ups. Once again, as you come into it, you've got that dark red trim around the room, the same height actually as the second room. On the floor, we now have a lava pit above, up beneath the Mogma, making the stakes for rescuing him a little bit higher. There's also some, I don't know what you'd call it, like hot coals on the floor to blow away with the gust bellows, which are not included in this set, unfortunately, but it's just an extra hazard and breaks up that dark bluish gray floor. You've also got two bomb flowers. Thought these might be necessary uh, for a new feature in the next room even though they come in the dungeon after the bomb wall so you could either remove them and give them to link at the beginning or put them by the entrance or whatever anyway they're here uh, another quick bit of foliage with another root sticking out of this rule I kind of wanted to do like a bigger root focus but I thought it would change the uh, the rooms too much and make access too hard anyway the play loop for this room is that you use scrapper to put out the fire in this doorway here then you come through and lower the magma down on the chain uh, sorry you get rid of the fire by pulling out this lever but you pretend to do it using scrapper 
then lower the magma down or save him from the lava uh, and then he will reward you by giving you a secret hint which all the magma mitts depending on your adventure uh, as which to uh, dig up the treasures which are here beneath two magma digging spots but these ones are just rupees uh, the key that you need to the door is actually hidden beneath this rock which is removable so again this is another explosion feature except for this one doesn't explode just put a bomb near it and then you take it off to reveal the secret digging spot up above this is a new addition as well you've got this um like blue archway and although there isn't a bokoblin included in the set this would have been a perfect spot for one of the archers that are spread around this dungeon not only does it break up the wall and add a spot of color uh, but it does fit the theming and allows you to pose a minifigure up here maybe the lizard or something before they attack um to well yeah do some damage then you can unlock the door and move into room five which is pretty much the same more fire down below uh but up here at the top before you make the uh, temple's key puzzle which is um the blind faith jump you've got this uh dots inspired uh, sun pattern again just continuing my motto of including dots patterns wherever possible across sets really like this one still included some studs because this is also where you spar with the dark lazalfos included in this set and for those of you who don't remember the play feature here is you can jump off and you actually choose one of these is supported by a technic assembly when you're building the set you choose which one that is uh, and one of them doesn't meaning that when link falls on one of them it's stable and when he falls on the other one it tips over and tips them into the lava so again your choice again another layer of customizability for the dungeon around the back is the boss room i've actually redone the design a little bit here although it doesn't look like it expanding out the platform around the edge so uh, there's a bit more room to walk around the outside i redid the stickers on the doors now using two by six tiles as well as actually made sure the doors could open still got the mural on the inside some space to fight girohim in this set and din's flame down below one of the collectibles that was also seen uh, Nehru's flame in the water temple and then feyor's flame wasn't seen until wave four <laughs> with uh, uh clock toss's set uh, I just thought now, of course, you could always pose Girahim on that room for blue thing, but um, we'll leave that for now. Anyway, um, this is now the Fire Sanctuary. It is so much more colourful. I love it a lot. I think it's a lot better, uh, but let's move on quickly. I'm not going to have to cover all 10 today, so we're getting close to being able to combine all the sets. Next up was the Water Temple, which, of course, was the other way of one set. If you guys want to see that in detail where I talk through all the play features, check out the video. It wasn't too long ago. It's a great video. I really enjoyed it. Um, but it was also joined in this Wave 1 lineup by Gomez Nest. So I've made a couple of tweaks here, very, very minor stuff, but let's take a look. Uh, firstly, the two modules have been expanded to eight wide. Previously, they were six wide, which was really, really weird because I don't know why that was the case, considering that all the modules are supposed to be either eight modules wide or 12 modules wide. 12 modules in the case of Fire Sanctuary, Coloctos, and Shadow Temple, and I think everything else is eights, but they combine nicely. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. Anyway, in this room, you've got the Spiderweb Trap, which has now been expanded to fit on eight studs. It works a little bit better now. Then you've got the steps up to the platform where if you hit the crystal and push it down, the doors open, a play feature inspired by the ocean monument in uh, lego minecraft then instead of having the octagonal plate i know i miss it too we've now just got this 8x8 one and that is so this room could be brought into standardized uh, form and have the full eight studs uh, width for the two technic pegs previously it was relying on one which is still the case in another set but that's a different scenario so yeah we got rid of the octagonal plate and changed the color to dark tan the last change here has been the deku scrub taking a little bit of inspiration from the unused leak actually uh, for the deku tree set i've included uh, this scrub a little bit differently now including a flip fire missile to come out of his mouth and some more leaf pieces around the head this will be my design going forward and will be used in the like Deku Palace set from Majora's Mask whenever I get to it uh, probably in the other coloring scheme but yeah they're here and no I did not make any changes to Goma uh, despite thinking I was going to I'm happy with the design she's cheapified she's not perfect but I don't think you can get much closer um, to how I would want her and I will be buying her to sit with my Deku Tree set in September so that was all the Wave 1 ones then let's just jump over to the Singular Wave 2 set which was the Shadow Temple uh, and again, this is mostly just cosmetic alterations. Starting at the entrance, once again, I added uh, some dark green for some moss colors. I finally, Studio has the hood piece in dark red, so I was able to add that to the boat, as well as change the skull design on the back to bring it more in line with modern times, as that old skull piece that was used hasn't been seen in ages. I'm also uh, changed up the track supports using the new two by two and two thirds 
uh, brick, which is in black, uh, which I think also adds a little bit of color contrast, but also is just saving on pieces because previously this was two plates stacked on top of each other, no longer. Uh, around the center scythe pieces, I reinforced the build and added some tiles to help support the uh, turning mechanism. But beyond that, the only thing I added was three gem pieces, which are sort of meant to represent the silver rubies that appear in uh, this ver in the game, in this room, but not really. I guess they could just be treasures too. Uh, following one of the track paths round on the boat, you land up at this uh, stocks, which has been reinforced with some bones here in dark red places. I guess that's representing flesh, uh, bones, some teeth, and then some more dark red. Uh, we've just got a couple of extra details reinforcing the walls as well as some stickers here. The wall master play feature hasn't changed, so you still slide this lever and it drops out on you. I did change the base of this room though to uh, green to represent the poison underneath. This is specifically for the bubble uh, play feature so that it looks like he's actually going over a dangerous gap. Uh, and then again, this room had its height changed along with the redead coffin room, which also had its height changed uh, and the coffin feature still works where you put a redead behind and then they burst out. Moving over to the second leg, I changed the exit to the tracks uh, here by adding a spider and a spider's web. Again, just adding a little bit of extra details. And then the dead hand room uh, just got modified so that the connector pins were in the right place and the play features still work. But apart from that, no changes to report there. And then on the last branch of this set, uh, we have the crusher room again uh, to the dock area where the boat comes in. I added more moss, more bones, actually added a ball and chain here to represent someone being tied up as well as a treasure chest. This is just a simple one that would maybe have rupees in or gems in this case because the rupee pack was not introduced until wave three. Again, more moss and spiders and bones uh, spread throughout. I changed the color of the spike platforms to add more contrast to light gray and then again just tiled everything off. Unfortunately, this is one room that isn't at the right height to be used as a second layer room specifically because the rail that makes this play feature work logically um, had to extend upwards which unfortunately limits it and then the biggest changes were probably made to the bongo bongo room for some reason this room was originally 16 studs deep i don't know why it's now 12 studs deep like it's supposed to be um it's been reinforced with a technic frame and i've put a simulation of the drum that he actually does his bongo bongoing on uh, using some brown and tan plates, which yes, looks weird, but it breaks up the color and adds something different. Yes, it looks like a sumo ring. I don't much care. The hands still go up and down and the fingers can be chopped off. Uh, if you want to see me go into this one in more details and talk about the play features, let me know because this one's actually really, really fun. Um, I really glossed over the uh, like the smashing play feature with the crushers uh, where like your goal is to go under the first one, jump on the second one, use it to rise up, then jump back onto the first one and then it up but, um, I'm going too fast anyway let's move on uh, I didn't touch the wave three sets at all so this is the uh, Tower of the Gods and the dungeon builder sets nothing changed in these at all actually they were perfect uh, just made a custom layout for this big one uh, the big layout that we're gonna do and then uh, the wave four sets so that's everything from Arbiter's Grounds uh, the Ancient Machines Battle Pack Room of Olvagia uh, boss battle, the Spirit Temple Gauntlet, and the Battle for the Sacred Flame, so Coloctos. The only changes made to any of these sets were just with the Technic pins. So I'm not going to show you those because it was just making sure that all the pins were spaced exactly eight studs apart. So uh, let's get on to the combination uh, first. The first thing I want to show you about the combination is how many minifigures you would get. So, if you had all 10 of these sets and combine them together, you're going to get a fair few figures. That is one Skyward Sword Link, uh, one Led the Mogma, one Magmarmos mini boss, one Scrapper, one Girahim in his Phase 2 form, and one Dark Lazalfos, a Water Tunic Link, a Zant, a Blue Chew, a Helmosaur, a Barry, and a Shell Blade, although that is just a shell piece, a uh, Goma, Child Link from Ocarina of Time, three Gomas Lava, and a Deku Scrub. Uh, then if we move into wave two, we got Bongo Bongo, uh, Twilight Princess Link, a Wallmaster, uh, a Stalfos, Dead Hand, uh, Twilight Princess Redead, and a Cursed Bubble. Wave three, would you get Link in his ancient armor from Breath of the Wild, Guardian Scout, and a Sheikah Monk. Then moving into wave four, which weirdly has the most dungeon sets out of all of them, which is a little bizarre, you get another Twilight Princess Link, a Twilight Princess Redead, uh, a Twilight Princess Poe, a Twilight Princess Stalfos, a Fire Bubble, and some Stalkins. I believe it's four in the set. You also get a uh, Beamos from Skyward Sword in its both live and decayed form, and technically you could argue Skyward Sword, Armos, Technoblin, and Centrobe, although those aren't going to be included in this model. Uh, we also get a Fire Tunic Link from Ocarina of Time, as well as Volvagia. We get another Child Link from Ocarina of Time with an Iron Knuckle, Twin Rover, and a Lever. 
And in the last set, you get Skyward Sword Link again, uh, alongside a Skyward Sword Quartermaster, or Stalfos. He's got the four arms, so I, I believe it's a, a Quartermaster. And then the two uh, Stal Koblins from that game, that's wrong, Kospo Koblins, and then Koloktos as a buildable figure. And I don't believe I missed anyone. I think that's pretty much everything. So across these 10 sets, ironically, only one of them doesn't come with a link. So you get nine links in this set, two of them for Skyward Sword, um, two of them for Twilight Princess, and then I'm whopping four of them for Ocarina of Time, two child links, uh, a blue tunic and a red tunic, no green tunic, weirdly enough. Uh, and then just uh, the one Breath of the Wild one in the Ancient Armor, so no traditional Breath of the Wild outfits. Just an interesting breakdown. And as, as far as bosses go, if we want to count Zan... Oh, technically Morphia as well in the Water Temple. Uh, so that's two. I'm going to count Magma main and Girahim for Fire Sanctuary. That's four. That's Goma makes five. Um, Who else? Uh, Bongo Bongo for six. And Dead Hand for seven. Iron Knuckle for eight. Valvagia for 9 and Coloctos for 10. So 10 sets, 10 bosses, although they don't work out perfectly. Interesting mix-up. Right, let's get on to it. This is what you've all been waiting for. Let's show you the sets all combined together. Whew, so isn't that layout just sprawling? Take a look at that. It's a little hard to take in all that's going on here. I've tried to showcase as many as of the angles and, and depth that this set can, this setup can get uh, here as possible. So specifically, I'm referring to the idea that the Water Temple lets you stack stuff on top of each other. Really wanted that to be here. Uh, the Shadow Temple lets you sort of make all these different branching paths with the roller coaster track. Really wanted to showcase hit that here. Uh, and certain rooms from Arbiter's Grounds, the Spirit Temple Gauntlet one, and uh, the Battle for the Sacred Flame, specifically the Lily Pad room from Coloctos, really do allow angles. Uh, so you can actually see that 45 degree angle over towards the back. And up from above, you can really see how deep uh, and so on this goes. But I also wanted to show off that you can just have a straight corridor as well. So all of that is here in this layout. And this layout, by the way, did take an hour to put together, uh, just moving all these things around, deciding how best to do it and making sure that everything was nice and unique. Unfortunately, the Water Temple put did sort of end up a little bit clustered just because the second floor makes things a little bit messy and there are certain rooms which suit themselves really well to being upstairs and other rooms that don't. Arguably, I would have really liked to put Bongo Bongo upstairs. I think that room would work really well as a second floor room. So I'm kind of sad that I didn't do that. So maybe in the next layout, we'll get Bongo Bongo upstairs. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, um, let's take it a quicker dive in and, and work through it. Looking at this uh, first section, you can see I always like to start these layouts with the Fire Sanctuary entrance because once again, even though there are pegs on both sides that you can attach to the front and the back of this one, I do think it is a nice starting point and technically doesn't have a play feature. So that would make it a filler room, although you could always attach an enemy here uh, so that you could have a little fight here. Moving on in past the stone statues, it immediately shrinks to an eight wide format using the uh, first room from the Deku Tree set, uh, specifically from Gomez Lair with the opening doors, which then goes into the Helmosaur like room from the Water Temple before entering into the Fire Sanctuary Mogma room as well. Um, so again, a pretty linear start. And then this is where the upstairs part starts coming in as well. Obviously you can't access this from downstairs but I also wanted to make sure that all of the uh, I don't know entrances or how do you phrase it um all the ends of a road either end in a treasure chest or a terminus piece, meaning a room that only has one entrance or exit, because we do have a couple of those. Specifically, uh, I'll show them, I'll point them out as we go along. There's no need for me to talk about it right at this second. Um, yeah, so then moving on a little further back, you can see that we have the magma main boss, so you could get a treasure item here to unlock the door into a shadow temple room, which I think works really well as a ground floor because the wall master literally drops from the ceiling. But also, um, you fall down from the spin platforms above it which we'll get to in a second you would fall down into this room which i think is cool it wouldn't make sense to fall down into a boss room but yeah um that works out really really well that feels pretty stable and supported which is really really nice uh, so that's pretty good uh, and then, of course, you enter into the Water Temple room, which splits in two directions. Now, before we go upstairs or continue right, we're actually going to go backwards and taking a look through the like the bottom layer. If you blow up the bottom wall, wall you're left with the water wheel. Here, you've actually got two entrances because you could go up the water wheel to get to uh, the sacred flame that is hiding up behind this door. Uh, or you could use the staircase in the other room once you complete the trials. It's up to you. Uh, no point there. But behind the water wheel, we have one of those directional changer rooms that I was talking about specifically from Spirit Temple Gauntlet, where you've got uh, the blade trap that's spinning around in a circle, but 
you've got the bridge off to the right uh, and a seemingly dead end straight ahead which is actually using the lens of truth wall if you spin the lens of truth wall out the way you would reveal a treasure chest behind there but most people would turn right and solve the puzzle with um the the serpent uh, head here which actually just spin uh, and opening up the door behind that would reveal the Koloktos encounter which is just the local encounter for this room I suppose um, and you can see him back there he can obviously be detached from his base and roam around but then again at this terminus so we had a treasure chest in the last one but here we have the other sacred flame specifically Feyors so let's go back to the water temple room if we were spinning the water temple staircase as I mentioned you could spin it to the back to access the Nehru sacred flame which is up there unfortunately you don't have a good picture of that um, or you can turn around and go back left over the spinning platforms uh, over through another lens of truth room with all the pots in or the flying pots that launch at you from a spirit temple gauntlet and then if you make it through the lens of truth wall which to me suggests that the lens of truth is the reward that you get uh, from beating the Magmarmos, at least in this uh, scenario. It plays out like a D&D campaign almost. Uh, but yeah, if you make it through the wall, you make it into the Dead Hand Encounter, which has another treasure house. And then another Terminus. I just thought it was cool having them on the second floor. Um, also, the Zelda Dungeons are multi-floor. So again, they're sprawling, they're chaotic. Yes, it definitely is a very messy look, but it's a child's creativity, and it's not supposed to be an exterior model, is it? It's not like combining castles or Hyrule castles. This is a course builder like, uh, like Mario more so than anything which i know a lot of you will make you make you flinch okay leaving the water temple room once again this time on the right um one of the modifications i made to arbiter's ground was to make sure that this uh sort of 30 40 degree angle section could be removed and used on its own that's being used here it would have a the fire bubble up up on that rod here and that enters straight into the morpheal which looks so bizarre but i really love how it looks being separate here uh, and then past morpheal if you were to defeat that you've got to go through the arbiter's grounds blade traps before entering in uh through a locked door to get to the bongo bongo fight who is guarding sort of the almost the next entrance i suppose into the dungeon like this is just like the leg one section of dungeon which is kind of insane to say because this is where you get on the uh the shadow temple's uh, death boat or whatever it is and choose your path at the roundabout where the the tracks can turn and twist so to start with we're actually going to go um sort of south southwest southeast i suppose is the correct direction uh, and end up here at the bottom right at the furthest it's a really short branch but again with the the shadow temple it opens up four possible paths uh where we come in at the shadow temple boat dock go across a lava bridge here on on the fire sanctuary room uh, and then cross over the perilous stalactite room to end in the redead room which there is a key so you have to come here to get a key uh, and as long as you escape from the redeads you should be all okay before getting back on the spirit boat and choosing a different direction specifically now we are going to go uh, up I'm going to choose my upwards path which brings you all the way up and snaking i chose to redo all the track layout for this model so that again you can take all these track parts individually apart and rearrange them so it doesn't just have to be the sort of uh cross shape which was in the original shadow temple it can be whatever shape you want it to in fact you could even make one of the paths a complete dead end uh, and just have one really long straight section of track i don't know what the purpose of that would be but you know choices are up to you you could also it's possible to have two uh, entrances and two branches on the same piece of track the uh, two of the docks one of the docks is like a, a u-shape meaning that the boat doesn't go out of there but the other three have no end cap meaning that you could attach more pieces of track on the other side of them and have like a, a halfway stop so to speak anyway enough about shadow temple following this path all the way down actually brings you to the builder shrine dungeon builder section i was originally going to split up the builder shrine rooms and put these different pieces all over the place and in the future i would like to combine builder shrine with the water temple because you could have a water temple like second floor and then that would link perfectly with um some of the raised and floating platforms in builder shrine but anyway builder shrines all together here today specifically because at either end of builder shrine you have these steps uh, that connect to the normal dungeon builder system and then lower down into the mario course builder system based dungeon builder anyway check out the video if you want to know more but anyway you get through the shrine um, you've got the floating platforms and stuff i really want to combine them with uh, water temple as i said uh, but then that ends you up pretty much at the end of this branch uh, where you go through the iron knuckle room where you fight that and then that brings you into the ground floor of the tower of the gods where you go up fight go down and then get a reward ring the bell 
Now, the last branch is the longest and most in-depth. When you get off the boat here, this is the right branch, uh, you're immediately met with the 45 degree angle of the lily pad room. Really wanted to show off that that was a really useful dungeon like component that allowed so much more depth and angles, as you can see from that overhead shot. And you're immediately faced with two uh, choices. In the original Kaloktos set, one of these is basically just a dead end room, which has a treasure chest in, but here it's a left and right choice. Left takes you into Volvagia's boss room, uh, which if you defeat, you can progress into the Arbiter's grounds, which is a sort of a dead ender. There are some places to attach rooms to the left and the right, uh, but the actual big door at the back, if you light the four torches by defeating the Poe, you get a treasure chest reward. And if you go right, you can face off Goma, who is basically a mini boss in this layout, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, but if we actually go right in the Kaloktos room, uh, it's going to take us in a completely different direction, starting us off with uh, the Shadow Temple's Crusher Room. And if you pass that challenge, you actually place into a new use for this one. This is the Ancient Machines Battle Pack Room, which is the Beemos Twirler. Uh, there's actually stud connections on all four sides for this one, specifically so you can use it as a multi-way connector. Because it changes from past to present, this one's a little bit awkward in how it's being implemented, but I actually quite like that it's here. It means technically you could choose where the link goes through the past or the present and which side it like gets flipped around to, or just yeah, where the time is correct. Anyway, time shenanigans, doesn't matter, it's just fun. Uh, and then you progress into the spinner section of Arbiter's Ground, which is connected to the arena. Unfortunately, you can't separate those two, which brings you into sort of the dungeon's end. Again, Fire Sanctuary really does have the beginning and the end. I'm hoping to get another dungeon that has a beginning and end. I mean, technically you can use Shadow Temple's Bongo Bongo, but this is technically the only room, one of the few rooms that has one entrance and an, a terminal end point, like a boss room in a sense, which is interesting. So do your final plunge and fight whoever, Kirahim Zan, I know Ganon from another set or whoever you want it could be one of the bosses like um, Goma could sit behind there uh, and fight but that is the end of that path so every every ending point ended in a terminus whether that be Tower of the Gods Fire Sanctuary or just a, a treasure chest room um, but yeah, it spirals out from there. It's kind of crazy. It looks awesome from almost every angle. And I'm very much aware that it is, is a mess. But I do really, really like how it looks. And I think it's um, a perfect show, finally, of what this system was capable of. I felt that way after we finally got around to Water Temple, um, where I got to show you my true vision for having like the second floor and, and combining the dungeons. But here, I think it really does sound strong as well. So I'm, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. This is the halfway point for the showcase in a sense, meaning like the full stop. Like So I reckon that there, the dungeon system is pretty much at its most complex. Like There will be more dungeon sets, but they're not going to add any brand new concepts really at this point. It's just going to be fleshing it out and re um, adding new rooms. So I think when we finish the showcase at the end of wave seven or nine or whenever, uh, I don't think there's any in wave nine. So wave seven, we will do this again uh, with all the dungeons this time but I will do a completely new layout from scratch. And I've put a note down that for that layout, I want Bongo Bongo upstairs, and I want the Water Temple second floor system and the Builder Shrine Dungeon Builder to interact. I know that those will make for good room combinations, and I'm excited to make more as we go through, but I'm happy to put a pin in this, say that all 10 of these dungeons are now remastered, or whatever you want to call them, Fire Sanctuary and Goma and Shadow were definitely remastered. The others were just fixed. Everything's happy with this. This is a good underline for the project uh, and we're happy to move forward as for what's coming on the channel in the upcoming weeks i've got some exciting things planned uh next week i actually have a non-zelda mock uh that you'll be happy to see and then the week after that we are doing our tears of the kingdom finale build is uh the well the ending of the game uh, featured in the custom set as we get even closer to the deku tree i've also got an exciting interview lined up in just a couple of weeks and of course i am waiting eagerly on the uh, land reviews of the Deku Tree, which of course I'm not a part of, but I will be watching and then providing uh, new updates for news on the Deku Tree for you guys. But anyway, have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the Dungeon Builder system and which combinations you think would be cool to see. Uh, yeah, this is 8,000 pieces. This is really cool. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.